What's up again? Hello, it's me, Evan Hillis, and I'm going to be showing you guys part two of the PowerPoint games I've made for you to use for free in your online teaching and or in your in-person classes. So today I'm going to show you guys four quick games that I made that are not too hard to play. You guys probably recognize some of them. And so yeah, let's just jump right into it. All right, so here's the first game. You sure you recognize this one? It's Hangman. Yes, it's pretty simple. Now this one's a little bit different from the other games that I play because this one isn't really like a class winner determiner. It's more just like a game that I play in my lesson and obviously it has lots of uh, learning value to it. So this one I'm going to show you because we do need zoom for this one. Uh, obviously if we're playing this in class just use a whiteboard. Uh, so first I'm going to open up zoom and just so you guys know, if you're using Zoom and you don't know this, definitely check that box that says use my personal ID PMI right there. You get it from that little down arrow next to there and that's going to make it so you don't have to get a new code every single time and you can just use the same code and all your kids can just join in really easily. That is a big help in case you didn't know. Alright, so I'm going to open it up. It's not going to show my face because I'm using the webcam already. But anyways, I'm going to hit down here, share screen, and then I'm going to go to this PowerPoint. And then I'm going to go into the uh, slideshow mode. And so now you can see it. So here at the top, when you move your mouse, this can sometimes be in other places, but usually it's at the top. I'm going to move my mouse up. Boop, I'm going to go to annotate. And then I'm going to have all these options. So here's the mouse option, which is just to use it like a normal mouse if you want to click on things in the PowerPoint. This is obviously to select stuff that you've drawn. That's your text stuff, drawing stuff. You can use this. You can use the straight line tool, which is really nice. Um, and then obviously you can erase it. Stamps, spotlight, I hardly ever use that one. Uh, format, you can actually change the font size as well of your writing, as, as well as make it bold or italic. Obviously you have undo and redo. If you accidentally do something you didn't want to do, it's super easy. Just go right back. And then of course you have the delete button, delete all. So let's say you have a kid who's crazy and he's drawing all over your class and all over your PowerPoint in the middle of your Zoom class. You can go down to the clear button and just hit clear viewers drawings and that will clear all of the kids drawings without erasing any of your stuff. Uh, obviously I'm the one who drew this so I'm going to click clear all. Another little handy tip for you is go up to the top there and you'll see this drop down thing. Go over to the three dots where it says more and down here it says disable annotate for others. So you can turn that option on or off and it will allow you to stop the kids from drawing all over your screen while you're in the middle of class. So if you didn't know that already, now you know. All right, so for this game, let's pretend that this word is like I don't know, six letters long. So I'm going to go underscore space, underscore space. All right, there you go. Six letter word. OK, kids. Now guess the letters. So for my Chinese students, we all were, this is like a game I'd use when we'd be learning phonics. And it's good for spelling and all sorts of other things. So for younger kids, I just have them guess the letter. All right, guess the letter. If you get it right, good. If you get it wrong, not so good. Now you can turn up the difficulty by making them say the sound of the letter. You can also add in an example word, like you'd have them say, this letter is T. The sound of T is T, -t, -t, -t as in turtle. And then you can also add, like, make them use it in a sentence, or you could have them say whether it's a vowel or consonant, whatever you want to do just to make it more difficult. Um, but yeah, that's all just to guess. And then if they get it right, good job. You guys get points. I'm going to put another text box up here above the one I just drew and put my T in there or whatever. And obviously if they get more than one letter I'm going to give them double the points. Um, and then of course if it's wrong you're going to write it over here even if they did all that work to guess it. Now I'll still give them like one point for just saying all that stuff and then I'll give them two points if they actually get it right. And then I'll give them one more point for however, more, however many more letters there are. And then of course when you've done that if they get it wrong you just click this little uh, box down here underneath and I have two because it's one for each team so I do one team and one team I've actually never had one team get all the way to the dead guy hangman thing but um, this is kind of for fun but anyways yeah if they get something wrong use the mouse button click that and that will make 
more body parts appear as you click it. And if you keep clicking it, it'll go all the way to the last one, which is the face. And then you click it again, and it blows up. Ooh, all right, so that's always fun. Again, I don't use this as the end of class game where it determines the winner for the whole lesson. I just use this in my lesson. So um, you can actually just copy and paste this whole slide. Now you can just go here and then hit copy, and then you can paste it into your own PowerPoint anywhere you want and just have it, just use it that way. All right, so that is Hangman. Let's go to the next game. I'm going to exit out of Zoom now because I don't really need to be in here. All right. Next one is called the matching game. Now, you probably know how to play the matching game. Everybody knows this. You usually play it with cards, but if you're playing it over Zoom, you can use this. So you can toggle between your game and your lesson or whatever by using the Alt Tab key, which I showed in the previous video. So go ahead and check that out if you already haven't, if you haven't already. That one's an even better game. Uh, but yeah, this one's very simple. Play it with pretty much any age group. Uh, obviously, probably older kids aren't going to care as much. But yeah, you have them pick a letter and a number. So they say, I want A1. And then pick another one. I want C2. OK, there you go. Well, those do not match, obviously. So I'm going to click that little cancel sign. And then those little boxes will come back. And then you let the other team go. And if somebody gets, uh, if they get a match, then they get three points. And you can even let them go again if you want. You can play it however you want. But you know, basic matching game, so pretty simple. All right, now if you click the next, if you click the background on this one, it's going to go to the next slide, and you don't really want it to. Now here's a little trick though. At the beginning of my class, sometimes I'll go to this next slide on purpose, and then I'm going to hit the up arrow on the keyboard, and it's going to reveal all of the pictures. <gasps> so you can actually do that on purpose for like five seconds. All right, I'm going to give you all five seconds to look at this at the beginning of the class and just see which kids are actually paying attention and which kids are smart enough to remember. And then hit up again and all those boxes will come back. All right, now they've at least, that kind of makes the game go faster because at the beginning a lot of kids are just guessing and nobody's getting it right and it's not that exciting. So giving them a slight chance to look at it first definitely makes it go faster. Um, but yeah, and of course as the game goes on it gets faster because it gets easier because there's less options to choose from. Uh, all right, that's that. Now, for you as a teacher, if you are finding that there is a lot of, uh, that all your kids are remembering where everything is, what you can do is just move one of these boxes and then, let's see, sorry, ooh, ooh, yeah, go to the next slide and you can actually, grab this thing, pull it off to the side, and then you can rearrange them. And then you can just copy and paste this and then put it under all that stuff. All right, if that makes sense. All right, so how to do that. You can hold control to zoom in and out if you scroll. Scroll and control. You can also just do that right here with this little thing in the bottom corner. Now, I'm gonna right click, go to group, ungroup. Now you can see all this stuff is in a group and this thing is by itself. So I'm going to ungroup it one more time. Now those things are all on their own and I can swap them. So you want to try to be careful that to kind of keep it in the same line as where it was so that everything does so that it's not poking off the side. So I swap those two and you can swap everything around however you like. And then when you're done, right click one of them again, go to group and then regroup. Now they're all grouped together again. Uh, and then you can also just select everything and just hit group again. That works too. Now I can copy this and I can go back to this slide and I can paste that there and then I can basically, I might have to remove all these individually, don't I? Ugh. Well, hmm. Better way to do it would probably be on this slide. Also hold control and click things to select them, multiple ones. I'm going to bring these all to the front. All right, cool. So now I can rearrange them and then slide all these back in to where they were. And boom, now you're good to go. All right, and go to this slide and everything should work. All right. 
So there you go. So yeah, I guess you would just use that slide. Maybe just delete this one. Anyways, you can figure it out for yourself. So that's another game you can use. All right, I'm not going to save that. Let's do next one is Typhoon. This is a game that was one of the first games we I ever learned. It's made up by someone who worked at my school. We usually just drew this on the board, and then we keep a little cheat sheet as to what uh, each you know each what was under each square, and we just have the draw a grid of you know five by five, right? A B C D E one two three four five, and then we tell the kids pick a number. So whenever you feel like, or maybe they get three points. Once they get three points, they can pick a number or something, or you just do it whenever. Choose yourself when they get to go. But I like to usually play this game throughout the class as we're going. So again, we maybe we do 10 minutes of lesson, then we come here, kids pick a number, we go back to the lesson. And then whatever they get, whatever shape, you just add that up as their points. So obviously circles two, triangles five, stars 10, uh, typhoons minus seven. Uh, you can change that. You can change the scores around to fit whatever you like, um, and make it even or make it f balanced for your team, or your class. And the last one I have switch points. So this is actually kind of important to have in there because you'll sometimes see if one team gets way too far ahead, the other team just stops caring because they're like, well, "There's no way we can win now," and you're like, "Well, you have a switch points. You could still get the last kid in the class could still." you know, get that switch points and your team could go from zero to a hundred and then the other team has zero. So it's kind of not fair, but at least it keeps the game interesting and it keeps it keeps hope alive, let's put it that way. So if anybody can win at any time, you never really know. Uh, so yeah, same basic animation and uh, functions as the other game, the matching game, but instead of picking two squares at a time, they just pick one and then you just add the points. So you say, okay, Tommy, pick a uh, square. Oh, okay, I want B3. All right, you got a triangle. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you got to be pumping them up. Obviously, when you're, especially if you're an English teacher teaching foreign kids, English, you kind of really have to have a lot of energy and basically like half entertainer, half teacher. So anyways, oh, wow, you got five points. Yeah, good job. You know, and really pump them up. And uh, yeah, keep playing like that. Now, the last thing is uh, same thing with this one. You know, you can, I have a, on the second slide here, I have a group. You can pull that out and then you can arrange all the things in different ways. And then you can just copy that and paste that up here. And then you can pull this one out and swap it out. So same thing for that. If you want to change it around between classes so that the kids don't just remember all the star positions, because they will do that if you play it multiple times. All right, last but not least, Connect Four. So as you may know, Connect 4 is a popular board game. This is just my version of it on PowerPoint. Uh, so yeah, the rules are the same as the real game. The only thing that's different is you, as the teacher, have to kind of be in control of the gravity, if that makes sense. So basically, wherever you click whatever square of color, it's going to make a little ball drop down to that that part. Uh, I couldn't get it to work where I just click the bottom and it, and it stacks up because I have limitations with PowerPoint. Uh, so. I could figure out this though, so I'd say, okay, pick a letter, the kid picks E, all right, I, he's on the blue team, so I click the blue square. Next kid goes on the other team, he's there on the red team, he picks E too, so I just click the red square, and then it'll automatically drop down. Obviously, what you don't want to do is click up here or something, because that doesn't make any sense. So just know how to play the game, and then you kind of control everything as the teacher. Uh, last thing is you can also click if you mess up, like, oh, I clicked the wrong one, you just click it again and it'll delete it. So it's really easy to fix. And the way I do the scoring is I have when the student gets, let's say, okay, he goes, goes here, he goes here, he goes here. Oh, you got three in a row. So I'll give the team two points. Um, this kind of just keeps the game, keeps the score going. And I also use whatever, uh, whenever they're answering questions in class, I add points to their team that way too. So whatever they're doing in class, plus the points from this game, whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. And also, if they get four in a row, then they get eight points, and then I reset the board, because it doesn't really make sense to keep playing after that. So sometimes the, someone will win before the class is over, so you can redo it. Uh, you can just clear everything by hitting escape, and then just going back into it. There you go. Or you can click everything, too. So that is how to play Connect Four, and it's all pretty simple.
So that is all of those really simple games that I made. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you can use them in your class. Um, they're much simpler to use than the Dragon Slayer games, so I get for some teachers they're not really into all that complicated point scoring and system. So this is definitely much simpler stuff that you can play. Good for young kids, and Connect 4 is definitely better for slightly older kids because it requires more strategy. So I'd say you know, up to middle school, even maybe some high school kids might be into that. Um, but yeah, depends on your class. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about any specific rules about the games, or if you're having any technical issues with something, feel free to let me know in the comments. I do answer comments, so I will try to get back to you as soon as possible on that. And again, the link for all of these games is down below in the description, where you can find this game plus the Dragon Slayer game from video one, and I'll be making a couple more videos for the other games that are also a little bit more complex, kind of like Dragon Slayer was. So those will take a little bit more time to explain. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoy, hope you can use some of these, and see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.